Friday the 28th of January, it's 4.20. I'm a bit behind schedule, but I'm about to head up to Newcastle under Limes Travel Lodge, which is just up the road from the Players' Pool Hall, whatever else it's called, that they're doing the qualifier. Call them my sat nav, it's three hours and 20 minutes to get there, so I think I might be having dinner at the services. Also need to um, get some fuel. Got to go and buy a um, SD card, because I'll borrow my friend's uh, GoPro, see if we can get some footage of that. And, um, I don't know, pump my tyre up as well. I think my tyre's pressure's a bit low, so not great for a three-hour drive. But yeah, here we go. Tesco has stepped up their game, that looks bloody lovely. <laughs> well, it's 5 30 already, I'm literally only two miles up the road. Just had some lunch, uh, dinner, but it's taken ages to get fuel and to do my tyres, so I need to get on the road. 5 30 already, it could be like 9 10 o'clock by the time I get there, depending on traffic, so let's we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Donald's fresh food. Uh, lots of nice stuff here. None of it's open. <laughs> I just stopped at the services and used the bathroom. I'm apparently 39 minutes away, so it's looking like being about half nine by the time I get to the hotel. So I don't know if there's gonna be time to quickly nip in and have a look at the pool hall. Shut up. I don't know if there's gonna be time to nip in and look at the pool hall. Um, might be too late by then, or they might have a funny policy about non-members, so. If, if I can pop in for 20 minutes, I'll go and have a look. If not, I won't worry about it, but we'll see. Oh. They were playing like lullaby music when I was on the loo and uh, it's making me want to go to sleep now. <laughs> it's not good. Ah, uh, 40 minutes ago. So it would appear that I've booked to stay in a travel lodge that doubles as a, as a Lidl. <laughs> so I don't know what that's about. Gonna be some weird parking rules in here. I suspect we've got to pay for a bloody parking. But, oh well, <laughs> weird. Now this is my magical room with the whole 89 pounds for two nights. <laughs> well, it's got a towel. That's actually not too bad considering. I've been in some bloody horrible travel lodges, but this one seems, seems all right actually. Do we have a plug socket? Yes, we do. That's good, it's always a nightmare when some of these don't have the bloody sockets. And this is Newcastle under Lime, is it? So I've got houses, probably other stuff. I'll go and see if the club's open now. Just see, I know it's half nine, something like that. But I might be able to get half an hour, an hour in there. Be good to check the venue out before the day, if I can. See if it's open. Quarter to ten, I'm back in the car. I'm gonna give it a quick go, see if I can get in the club, but I might not be allowed in. There might be funny about non-members in at this time, but we'll see if we can give it a go. If not, I'll just go to bed, doesn't matter. The ultimate pool arena. Lots of snooker room, tables. <laughs> and then I was just playing in there. Seems quite nice. So I'm playing in an ultimate pool qualifier tomorrow. Playing all right. But, uh, I almost don't need to win really because that means I have to drive up here again for another three hours. But yeah, I'll give it a go. I'm back in the room. 
I actually look pretty knackered. <laughs> pretty tired now. Um, played all right. Good enough to compete. That's the important thing. Which, um, you know, as long as I play all right like that tomorrow, even if I lose, as long as I play all right, you know, that's, uh, that's the aim of the exercise. Tables seem quite nice. I was expecting them to be like lightning fast for some reason, but actually they were just like any other club. They played nicely. So, um, yeah, it's just on the day, really. See how it goes. Again, like I said, it's almost like I don't really want to qualify in a way. I do. I want to qualify because I think it'd be quite a cool achievement to do that, get on TV, even if I make a clown out of myself. But it will be a real pain in the bum if I actually do qualify because then I've got to try and um, work on Monday and then somehow drive four hours, play a couple of games of pool and then drive another four hours back. So, I don't know. So, I'll do my best and we'll take it from there. I'm trying to sort my life out a bit. I've got all my stuff here. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to be playing until about 2 p.m. tomorrow, but um, I have to double check that because they did the draw twice and I had a different match one time after the other, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, oh, in case people are interested in this sort of stuff, people, I don't know what it is, people like this, what's in your Q case rubbish? What is in my Q case? Uh, one, oh God, one John Paris Ambassador Q from about. 2001 i got that for my 17th birthday one sd joint steve davis joint extension a little six inch thing i use that comes in useful in english pool never use that in english pool i'll just play a bit of snooker and keep it together bunch of chalks some different grades of sandpaper uh, and that's it oh yeah and this um sports rag thing which does a really good job of cleaning my um queue so there we go Right, I'm gonna watch some stuff on my phone, get in the bed. Well, I'm gonna brush my teeth, get in the bed, watch some stuff on my phone, get some kip. And uh, as I said, I don't think I'm on till like two, so I might just set my alarm for midday and just sleep as much as I can sleep. <laughs> and I'll catch you tomorrow. See you later. Oh, morning. It's like half 10, I didn't go to sleep until two, except like an hour, uh, till about half nine. Uh, feeling pretty knackered, but I'm going to try and peel myself out of bed and um, get myself a breakfast. I think my match is on at two o'clock. I checked it last night, so um, get the dots about in bed a bit. And oh, there's a windmill over there, amazing. But yeah, I'm going to see if I can get breakfast in. Oh, maybe that'll pep me up a bit. Oh, back from breakfast in an hour and 20 minutes stuffed already oh ran up the stairs now i'm knackered i'll get like an extra half hour's kip i'm feeling a bit tired again now maybe head up the club at like one o'clock start my match at two that'll get me a bit of time to catch up on what else is going on just a little nosy around it's possible I won't be able to get any footage, we'll see how it goes. Oh, right, I'm gonna use the loo and then go back to bed for a bit, I'll catch in a bit. I think perhaps I was feeling a bit optimistic, thinking they might have an iron in the um, <laughs> hotel room, so I'm looking a bit crinkled. I mean, it's, it feels all right in my body, but the sleeves are a bit weird on this shirt. Yeah, a bit better. Roll the sleeves up a little bit. It's a little bit tight there. Very noisy. So, no, we'll see. Could be alright. If not, I'll have to ditch it. But if I can't play in it, it's no good. We'll give it a go. Alright, anyway, I'm running late, so time to get up the road and get on. Here we go. I'm glad they left their door open. <laughs> Forward walk there, it's about a 10 minute walk. So if you stop peeing it down later. <sighs> it's not very really the park there, that's the trouble. So I thought we might as well just leave the car at the hotel. What a lovely walk this is. <laughs> but there it is in the distance, so not too far away. Not too bad at all. I don't know, 
how much footage I'm going to be able to get. Well, I bottled it. I went 5-0 up. I was a bit fortunate to go 5-0 up, to be fair. He, um, he bottled it a bit earlier in the match. Let me get that far in front. Didn't have much of a look in. 5-0 to 5-4. So, I mean, the guy played well. He, once we went 5-0 up, he kind of switched on and started potting stuff. Played really well. Got to 5-4. I had a chance to win the game. And um, his mate stood right in front of my shot. Like, literally, like, just stood like three foot behind my table, right in front of me. It's just sharp me, basically. And I let it distract me. And I missed that. Well, no, I got, I did get back to the table that game, but um, I don't know what was something about that table. I, uh, I'm, norm I'm, I'm normally pretty good at getting out of snookers. And every single snooker I tried play getting out of, I missed by miles. It played, like the cushions played so narrow. Some of the snookers, I can't believe I didn't hit the ball. I can't believe I didn't hit the ball. They were so straightforward and they still didn't work. So anyway, I mean, I might, I probably wouldn't have won that game anyway, but getting ball in hand from flipping from like a simple one cushion escape. Like, what? Uh, so we got, and then he broken, cleared up to go five all. Last game I broke, so I won the lag. Not between us, neither of us had had, like, I think I think I had five dry breaks in, out of six. And they were spreading beautifully. They just couldn't make a ball. On the last game, I thought, right, I'm going to give it everything. Make sure all the balls are tight. Really give it everything. Hit the ball. Try and make one down. Smack the ball, spread him like a dream, and then a yellow, the second yellow in flew into the middle pocket, hit the back of the pocket, came back out again, and yellows were all like over pockets. But thankfully, he didn't clear up. He got a really easy chance and he messed it up. So it was a bit of a tip that, but ultimately, the first chance to clear up came to me. So I potted a couple of balls, and then I had like a you know, sort of shot where you're like a foot and a half away from the object ball, just off angle, and it's three foot away from the corner a foot out from the pocket. I had to kind of do like a soft stun with a bit of left-hand side to make sure it stunned straight into the middle pocket. And of course, I'm pointing at that guy's mate again. And he must have seen that I was playing that shot. He grabbed his flipping coat and um, and cue case and walked right in front of me. And I let it rattle me while I was down on the shot to win, you know, two, three straightforward shots to win the game. And I, I let it rattle me, but I didn't play the shot right. I thought, right, I'm going to get back up again. Go and have a drink. I knew it had like completely blown my concentration. By this time, of course, because of his big comeback and he was a local guy, a lot of people watching the match. So I was feeling the pressure anyway. Come back from that. I barely potted a ball in that whole time. And I got down and I just bottled it. Ultimately, I had the chance to win the game and I bottled it. So I missed that ball. He played quite a canny end end game, really. He, um, he didn't take any chances and he played a few good snookers. He could have cleared up straight then and there, but he didn't. He didn't need to. Then I had another chance. By the time I missed, I bottled that first shot, I was gone. Completely gone. But it's annoying because I didn't used to be like that. Well, one of my great strengths when I used to play was I used to hold it together really well. And under the pressure, I'd pop the balls and I'd win the game. I've lost my bottle, really. Maybe it's because I've not really got any wins under, decent wins under my belt recently. So I've not got like a lot of confidence backing it up, but I'm just not the same guy at the moment. Well, I really hope I can get that back. It didn't work for Steve Davis. <laughs> I got rattled, okay. I think if I'd have not been rattled, I'd have potted those and won the game. But unlike the first time that guy distracted me when I was down on the shot, just playing the shot, I was down on the shot, but I was early enough into the shot that I could get back up again. So from that point of view, the fact that I got back up, I had a drink, got down and then bottled it. That's all on me. What a shame. 5 nil up. Did some really good clearances. Played really well. Absolutely blew it. I mean, uh, all credit to the other guy. He held it together. He was, quite, he was a bit unfortunate to go so far behind. And um, he did really well to come back. In front of all his pals. I mean, he's, up, he's under a lot of pressure as well. So well, every credit to him. So fair play to him. Hope he does well. I'm just going to take it easy today. Uh, I was going to stay up there, but... I don't want to be the guy who's there who lost from 5-0 up to 6-5 in front of some guy who knows everyone. I just don't want to be there. So I need to disappear, recompose, try again tomorrow. Oh dear. I need to play more matches. I need to be put under pressure and start winning them.
And at the moment, I'm not playing very many matches. And I'm bottling it. And it's a real worry. I mean, I was never the best cutest or anything. But the one thing that I did have is I had loads of bottle and I was always really confident and I would win from tough positions. And now I'm like the opposite. I'll get myself into a winning position and I can't finish. And that's like, ugh, that's a real worry because I'm not used to that. So I don't know how to deal with it. You know, you try and do everything right, get down, make sure you're lined up, put in the ball. But I don't know, I was queuing really, I, I didn't feel like I was queuing well by the end anyway. I've kind of gone cold. That's why the greatest players are so great because when they come back to the table after having been sat out they can still deliver the cue straight they can still win the game and that's what marks them out as great players well that's just one of many reasons uh right well it's very hard to be um objective straight after a game especially a bad loss like that but we're still here and we're still in the event and there are positives to take out of that even though i blew it I did start the game really well. I pulled out a really difficult cle um, clearance of the black in the corner of the pocket to win the second game. Anyway, right. Well, I'm going to have a bit of a break and then try and figure out what the hell I'm going to do with the rest of my day. Probably not going to go up the club. I'm going to keep away from there. Try again tomorrow. Recompose myself. Forget about the match. And, um, yeah, I'm going to have a break for a bit. Wait for my pizza to be cooked. Oh, bad lighting in here. Well, I've gone for a banquet from the restaurant here. My well, banquet meal. Pizza and chicken wings. Yeah, I've decided I'm just going to eat this, have a relaxed day, and then tomorrow, even though I kind of don't really want to qualify that much, uh, I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to play as strong as I possibly can because I've absolutely had it enough. This isn't about getting through the ultimate pool, don't care about that. Now it's about me stopping being a loser, basically. I keep losing, I'm not having it anymore. That's not who I am. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. I'm bloody depressed after that. I've just been talking to my friend about it but it's already out I'm not even the thing is it's a weird one I don't care that I lost 6-5 from being 5-0 up shit happens I didn't even really have that much of a look in from being 5-0 up to 5-4 I didn't really have much of a chance 5-4 I had a chance to clear up got put off shit happens it's not great, but shit happens. Five all didn't have a chance. Ah, uh, you know, went to five all, didn't really have a chance. It's uh, what I'm upset about is that I just I bottled it. It's that I bottled it. I had a chance to clear up in the game to win the match. It was a straightforward chance. I got distracted by the guy. But it was early enough that I could get up, go and have a drink. But because he'd done it to me before, I was so peed off that he did it again. And I just let it rattle me so bad. Uh, and then missed the shot, missed the sitter of a shot. I could have probably potted that with one hand. Uh, well, I wasn't a sitter, but it wasn't that difficult. And that's what I'm upset about. Because um, I let it get to me and I never used to. I used to be so strong mentally and now I'm weak. And it's a weird one because I didn't really miss anything that much in that game. Maybe I missed five balls in 13 frames. Maybe. Two of them were that same frame. Um, so it's a weird one I mean, like, you think to yourself well I put all these hours in on the practice table the last couple of well last few weeks but I'm not losing like I'm not really losing 
I mean, maybe a few of those Challenge 25 matches that I played last year, I might have lost, I made a lot of mistakes, but I'm losing because of this. And that's really bad because I don't really know what to do about it. I'm stuck in a habit of losing and like demolish my own confidence. And that's what I'm upset about. I'm not upset about, I don't even care about that match too much. It's inconsequential because I didn't really want to qualify that mat badly, which maybe is part of the problem. Maybe I didn't want it enough, so I let him get back in the game. Maybe I could have fought harder for those first four frames that he won, maybe. And then he did a breaking clearance, so I can't really do anything about that. I don't know. And by the time I got to the last frame, I, had, I was shot. I think, well, okay, I'm putting all these hours in the practice table, but they're not getting me what I need. And what I need is, into, is the, to be in the habit of winning and not just winning easy games against easy people. I need to be in the habit of winning against adversity. And at the moment, I'm not. I'm losing every time it comes to... I've had three games that have gone 6-5 and I've lost... Uh, if I've had three games in like the last few months that have gone 5 all, and I've lost on the decider. I'm in a really bad rut. I really don't know what to do about it. I mean, I could practice as much as you like, but if you real realistically, you need match practice and you need to win. You need to win well a couple of times. You need to get back in the, I need to get back in the swing of it. But I need to win against people who I <clears throat> really want to win. So I, could, I mean, I could set up a bunch of games against people who aren't that good and get some soft wins. But what's the point? Is it going to work? Maybe. Maybe I need to build myself up, back up to it. Maybe I need to arrange a bunch of 20 quid matches with people who I think I'm certain I'm going to beat. But then they're not going to play those games. <sighs> I don't know. It's really a... It's a weird one, actually. I was just saying, the fact that I feel so depressed about it, maybe that's a good thing. Because it means it matters. It really does. I've never, I haven't felt this depressed about a loss for a long time. And it's weird, because I'm, like, I'm back in it tomorrow. But it's just the way that I lost. Not the loss itself. It's just the fact that I bottled it. That's so depressing for somebody who's used to having, you know, my bottle was one of my number one assets and if that's gone, what the hell am I? Earlier I was thinking, all right, I'm never gonna bottle another game again. But I feel, I was a bit more, feeling a bit more defiant then. Whereas today I just feel, right now, I just feel depressed, so depressed. There's a weird one. I mean, I've got to keep at it because I've signed my, you know, I've already paid like 800 quid or something for tour fees this year. So, I mean, I'm working hard on trying to get myself a bit of a reliable queue action again. But at the moment, I'm not losing because my queue action's letting me down. I'm losing because I'm bottling it. And I don't think, well, maybe that is my queue action letting me down. I don't know. I never felt right on the shot. I don't think I set up right in the first place. I just I don't, know. I don't know what to do, but it's going to be a tough night. Right, catch you in the morning. See you later. Oh, morning. Literally just woken up. It's about quarter to nine. And about five hours sleep. Oh, I spent the entire night <sighs> I have weird dreams about the event and today. Not so much like missing or losing that game, but just like being there and screwing my cue together and playing shots and things like that. Just being there again. It's weird. Uh, right, yeah, I've just got just over an hour, so I need to peel myself out of bed. Go and have a shower. Need another 10 hours sleep, but... Not getting it, so <laughs> time to get up. It's 
Time to make amends for yesterday. Actually, it's time to get some breakfast, but then make amends. Oh, Sunday breakfast, slightly smaller than last time. Uh, my match is at 11 a.m. So, got about a 10 minute walk. I'm gonna leave my car in this weird little car park. Cause it's free, but if I just park up the road, I have to pay eight, something like seven or eight quid for four and a half hours. I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. Probably not very long if it's anything like yesterday, but we'll see how it goes. Really, just I'm just hoping I play all right and don't bottle it. That'd be a good start. Just keep my composure. I don't care about the results too much. Obviously, it'd be nice to win and get through, but it's more about my performance. So we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Almost there again. It's a lot quieter. I guess not many people were here this early. I thought he was funny on that, but he's not.
So it looks like I'm going to a pool hall with a couple who came up and said hello to me. Of course, a bit wobbly. A couple, couple came up and said hello to me during the um, tournament. Very nice couple called Mike and Caroline. And we're going to go and play some pool now. So yeah, but we're going to have a quick game of pool and then I'm going to head home after that. So we might get to res rescue something out of the weekend. Billiards and Stoke looks like we're gonna play here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Well, I'm now at Keel Services because I don't know how to read road signs and I've ended up driving the wrong way on the M6 and I'm now I'm going up to Manchester. So I'm going to have some dinner and then I've got a three hour and 20 minute drive home and it was only three hours and 13 minutes when I left the pool hall. So well done. What a donut. Turn around. <laughs> Finally arrived at Keeley Services again, this time on the southbound side, so hooray for that. So in about 10 minutes time after I've been to the toilet, I'll um, hopefully have got back to where I should have been about an hour ago. So brilliant work, well done. Well, I may not have been a winner in pool, but I can still win something today. Five pounds, get in, you beauty. <laughs> right, time to get on the road. I think we've got about three hours and 10 minutes to go, which when I left, there was only three hours and 13 minutes, and that was over an hour and 20 minutes ago. So it's going really well so far. It's gonna be later than 10 o'clock when I go in, but here we go, see if I can do this, everything from now in one run. Championships, but I'm going to put the brakes on that. But I haven't paid to enter it, yet, enter it yet, so we're not going to enter the world. My first, my next event, I can't remember what it's going to be. It's either going to be a, like either going to be a GB9 event. It's either going to be that, or it's going to be the first IPA event of the year. I need to go back to the drawing board a little bit 
I should get some wins under my belt. I'm just out the out the habit of playing matches, and, uh, and I've gone from like zero to a hundred. Really, I'm not playing any matches, and then I'm going in and playing like you know professional level events. Most important thing I've got to work on for next month: make sure I've got a rock solid Q action, tighten up my positional play a bit, but just get some match practice under my belt. And so ends my adventure for this time. Thanks for watching for watching my uh, exciting video. Well, it's not exciting at all, but thanks for watching anyway. But.